fine shot. Uh, oh! oh! I should have yelled two! <laughs> what a classic <laughs> golf clip. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun with some golf balls. I've got a fun little project that would be a perfect gift for that golfer in your life or just make a great conversation piece that will impress your friends. So let's get started with this build. So I blame my dad for being interested in this project. He was the king of wooden puzzles as well as anything that would be a mind bender. He was an amazing engineer and I think that's why he found these things interesting. And I think his curiosity in gadgets like this has rubbed off on me. So this would have been a perfect gift for him. So let's check out what we're gonna need for this project and get started with this fun little build. So for today's project, we really only need a couple of items from the shop. We need a piece of softwood that's at least five inches long. We also need a Forstner bit that's one and a quarter inches in diameter. From the kitchen, we're gonna need a couple of items. We need something that's going to boil some water as well as a pot. We're also gonna need some tongs. Lastly, you're gonna need a golf ball. So I just mentioned that you're gonna need a piece of softwood that's at least five inches long. However, I'd really like to do this with some hardwood. I've got a piece of scrap walnut here that we're gonna to attempt to make this project with. And I have no idea if this is gonna work, so this may be a total failure. But that's okay, because if it does work with a piece of hardwood like this walnut, it's gonna take this project to an entirely different level. So it's worth giving it a shot and see if it works. So let's mill this wood up and get it to the appropriate dimensions. In this case, we wanna go with a piece of wood that's five inches long by one and three quarters by one and three quarters. Now for my walnut, I already cut this eight quarter piece down to five inches exactly. For the softwood, I'm just gonna use an old four by four and cut it down to five inches. So first up, I'm just gonna square off the end. Now that we have that end cleaned up, I'm just gonna mark down at five inches exactly. Then I'll cut this four by four to five inches. Now precision isn't key here. If you cut these pieces down to four and a half inches or five and a half inches, it really isn't gonna matter. You're gonna get the same result in the end. Now let's go down to ripping these pieces down to the appropriate width. Now when cutting these two pieces of wood down, we want them to be one and three quarters of an inch wide by one and three quarters of an inch tall. We also wanna cut off these rounded edges on the four by four. So that's what we're gonna do next. So since my saw blade, even with it raised all the way up, won't cut through this entire four x four, I'm gonna cut it once on one side, flip it over and cut it on the other side. I'm also gonna clean up one edge of this walnut. Now that we have two flat sides, we can reference these sides to the table saw fence and cut them at one and three quarters of an inch. So now I have two blanks cut out to the right dimensions. Now it's time to scribe out some lines on these so that we can begin to make the cuts on the interior of each one of these blanks. So the first thing that I wanna do is to scribe a line on both sides at one inch from the end. Then I wanna flip it 90 degrees and do the same thing to the adjacent side. Now that we have a line scribed out on two adjacent sides at one inch from the end, we now need to scribe a line right down the middle of this piece of wood. And this should be at seven eighths of an inch, which is one half of one and three quarters. Once you have all your lines scribed, you should have two sides that look like this. Now it may be all for naught, but I'm gonna do this on the walnut as well. So now that I have my two pieces of wood lined up, it's time to go over to the drill press and start doing some cutting. So as I said before, we're gonna be using a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. So I pre-installed this Forstner bit into the drill press. Now hopefully you can see this, but I've also put in a temporary fence so that my crosshairs will intersect with that center line that we struck earlier. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make cuts all the way down the length of this piece of wood until we get to both hash marks. And since I love this new tool so much, all I need to do to set the Forstner bit is to select my speed chart, 
select my Forstner bit, and then select one and a quarter inch. And for this, we're gonna be doing softwood. Now, one thing to note here is I do have a backer board to prevent tear out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bore out a hole at both ends, and then I'll slowly creep down the middle of it. With the two end holes drilled out, it's now just a matter of running down the line. So after running that drill press up and down that line, you should have something that kind of looks like this. Now it's time to work on the adjacent side and do the same thing. So once again, we'll line up our crosshairs to that hash mark and then we'll move our piece all the way down the length of the piece of wood. So now that we've drilled holes on both sides of this workpiece, it's now time to clean it up. But before we do that, I want to do the same thing to that piece of walnut. So, so far we're looking pretty good. I was able to cut out both of these pieces fairly easily. Now there was some tear out on both pieces, but that's okay, because we're gonna go over to the assembly table and sand those down. So we're not gonna do anything fancy here. I'm just gonna take some 80 grit sandpaper and clean up some of those interior edges. So now I've got my two pieces sanded down and we're ready for the next step. Now the next step is something I've been nervous about since the very beginning. So let's go over to the assembly table and start talking about the next step. So for this next step, I'm going to introduce some boiling water to these two pieces of wood. The first thing I want to do is to place my wood into this pot. Next we're going to turn the kettle on and let that water come to a boil. So now that our water has come to a boil, I'm now going to pour it into the pot with the two pieces of wood. Now the pine's going to need at least 15 minutes, and I'm guessing that walnut's going to need a lot longer. So fingers crossed. So I'm just going to put a little bit of weight onto that wood so it stays fully submerged. 15 minutes later. So it's been 15 minutes. Now we're gonna take two golf balls and see if we can slide them into either pieces of wood. So here I've got my two golf balls and we'll simply see if we can slide them into these pieces of wood. We'll first start off with the pine. And just like that, it slides right in. Next up, the walnut. Hey, and just like that, it slides right in. Now being the wood nerd that I am, you have no idea how happy I am that golf ball slid into that walnut. Now it's just a waiting game, letting these two pieces of wood dry out. And these two pieces of wood absorbed a lot of water, so it's gonna take a bit. So I've let both of these dry out, and now it's time to finish them. The only thing I have left to do is to do some finish sanding and then put some Danish oil on them. So back to sanding with 120 grit. With both of these sanded, we can now apply some Danish oil and call these done. And I'll put a couple of coats of Danish oil onto this wood, let it fully absorb, and then wipe off any excess with a rag. Well, I couldn't be more pleased with how these turned out. These will make a great gift or a conversation piece for your coffee table. And I'm so pleased that I took the chance with that walnut. I really didn't expect that to work. But that's what woodworking is all about. Trying new things, experimenting, and see what works for you. Well, thanks for joining me on this short little build. This was a lot of fun to make, and it's a project that anybody can tackle. Whether you're a beginning woodworker or a seasoned veteran, give this a shot. It's a lot of fun. 
Well, thanks again for joining me today, folks. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.